there, I'm Elizabeth from OurPaleoFamily.com and today we're just doing a little Whole30 prep. So um, if you've watched any of my other Whole30 videos, you will know that I say <clears throat> the way through the Whole30, besides just having really good food that you are enjoying eating, is having some good sauces. And we've made the mayonnaise and we've made the ranch dressing. And I actually just had to make another batch because I was out. So I made those two. And there's an avocado lime dressing that I'm really anxious to try. But I thought I got avocados um, at the store last week and I apparently didn't. So um, that's going to have to wait until tomorrow after I head back to the store and get some avocados. So today we're going to make a Whole30 approved barbecue sauce. And, you know, barbecue sauce is, I mean, the recipes just run the gamut. They're all over the place. There are thin, vinegary sauces. There are thick, um, syrupy sauces. And actually, as I'm thinking about this now, I don't think I put my vinegar on here. Excuse me. Um, I'm just making this up. I'm making it up as we go along today. I have made a lot of barbecue sauces. And the last one I made, I really like a lot, but it has molasses in it, and so we can't do that. Um, however, for my taste, and I think for most people's taste, the barbecue sauce needs a little bit of sweetness. So, on the Whole30, you have a couple legal ways of getting there. And one is to use some fruit juice, or fruit in some form, and the other is dates. And I've done both, and um, dates will bring sort of a thickness that you might like. However, I think they're just a, they're going to make it a little more difficult of a process to make because you want them chopped up. So you either have to chop them very finely, so, probably soak them because they're kind of dry and tough typically. Soak them and then chop them, and you still are going to have little chunks really there's no way you could get them chopped finely enough that it will yield a smooth result in the end you're going to have to do some blending so then you cook your sauce and you have to blend it somehow so we're not going to do that i am going to have some little tiny lumps in my sauce because i have i minced my onion pretty fine and i'm going to cook it so it gets really soft and it's going to cook down in the sauce and it's going to be soft it's not going to be like a chewy bite in my sauce. So we have our ghee and our onions. I'm going to let that go for just a second while I open my tomato paste. It's just a six ounce can of tomato paste and I looked through all the tomato paste in the store and there were a surprising number of them. And for to buy a can like this, whoops, they all have tomatoes and ascorbic acid which is vitamin C, that's for discoloration, and then, oh gosh, there's one other thing, let me read it. Oh, tomatoes and citric acid. So the others had something else in them. I can't now off the top of my head remember what it was. Um, but this Kroger brand is the one that had just the tomatoes and citric acid. So the way I open my tomato paste when I'm using a can that I find works the best and helps really get the paste out, makes it the easiest on me, is you saw what I did, I used my can opener, I opened both ends of my can. So then I used this one to just push it down. And out it comes. And you can take a knife and run around and get all the rest of it. There will be a little bit still in there, but usually less than a teaspoon. Sometimes I'll just throw that out. Okay, so there's our tomato paste. And I got out my flat whisk. And I'm just going to stir this around while I start measuring up the rest of my ingredients. So for my sweetness in my recipe today, I'm going to use apple juice. I found this is the R.W. Knudsen, Knudsen Organic Apple Juice, and it's just organic apples and vitamin C. And I like that it looks cloudy. It actually looks more like apple cider. We don't 
We don't do a lot of juice in this house. Even when my kids were really little, they didn't drink juice. Um, so I almost cringe when I buy it, but I thought it would be the easiest way to get the sweetness in my sauce. So those are cooking, and that's kind of um, deepening the flavor there. And I'm gonna start piling in the rest of my ingredients. So this is tomato sauce, and actually I bought this carton of it because um, I make like a, a tomato soup that's very much like Campbell's tomato soup, and it's really good and it's really simple. Um, but it needs a little, just a little bit of sweetener, and I usually put just a couple drops of a couple drops of liquid stevia, and it uses that whole um, canister. But can't have the stevia right now, so I'm going to use the tomatoes for some other stuff. So I added just a little bit of tomato sauce. I might end up adding a little bit more. I want my barbecue sauce to be thick. I don't want it to run off the pan. And really, you would not have to cook this. But I think that cooking just deepens the flavors and I'm choosing to cook it. So you could absolutely make all of this without cooking. I'm gonna start with a quarter of a cup of this apple juice and I may add a little bit more. We'll see how sweet that is. So I've got my onion um, sauteed in a little ghee, tomato paste, tomato sauce, and apple juice, and I'm gonna start layering in my flavors. And um, one flavor is my coconut aminos, which again, just adds that sort of umami flavor. So I'm gonna start with a tablespoon and a half. Let me correct this. I wrote down three tablespoons, and that's not what I want. I'm gonna use balsamic vinegar today, and I want two tablespoons of that. is cooking really high. That'll also add a nice dark color I really like. Now all of a sudden it looks like barbecue sauce so it's not bright red like this tomatoes or ketchup. It looks like barbecue sauce. And I did add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt when I started with my um, my onions. But I'm gonna add some more flavors. And what I have here is black pepper. So I'm just gonna sprinkle in a little black pepper because I'm gonna add some other peppers in. And I have cayenne. So we are, we are hot and spicy uh, wimps in this house. We do not like a lot of spice. I just, but I recognize that the chilies add flavor. And so I do want the flavor before I add my chipotle, I'm going to add a teaspoon of paprika. Oh, they won't fix. That drives me crazy. Or I'm going to use my half a teaspoon and I'll just use it twice. Okie dokie. Uh, and do I want this? Garlic powder. I do want garlic powder. I have several different things going on today, so um, I couldn't remember if I... I needed my garlic powder for this recipe or my next recipe. And then we have this chipotle powder, which if you look, I won't say all, because there are a zillion recipes out there, but when I was looking for barbecue sauce recipes a couple years ago, we had eaten in a restaurant and it, and they had a like a blueberry chipotle barbecue sauce and it was really good and it wasn't spicy. I was like, oh, that's awesome. I want to make that. So I came home and I looked up recipes to see if I could find some. You know, is there something more complicated in there besides blueberries and chipotle? Which I knew, of course, there had to be. And they called, these recipes called for tablespoons of this chipotle powder. And I had never worked with it before. And they all talked about, oh, it's so smoky. And so I bought it. I could find it in bulk at my Whole Foods. And now I bought this. A couple years ago and it's been in my spice cabinet so it's possible it's likely that it has lost some of its potency but that sauce was so hot we couldn't eat it it was so so spicy and I can smell this and it does smell really smoky so I, I mean I get that smokiness so this is about an eighth of a teaspoon and I know that seems like nothing but that's where I'm starting because I don't want this to go to waste I want to be able to eat it because, in fact, we are traveling again. We're going back to that same place this coming weekend. 
and I, we're going to eat in the same restaurant, this barbecue restaurant, and I know absolutely that all the sauces have sugar in them, and they probably have corn syrup in them. And I'm going to be on days, get this, 27, 28, and 29 of my Whole30. I'm going on vacation. I'm almost at the end, but it's not the end. And I need to not eat any sugar. And so I'm hoping that they can get me just plain meat and I can have my own barbecue sauce that will make it delicious and Whole30 compliant. I had to wait a second because, you know, it can take a little minute for the heat to kick in. It's a little too tomatoey, a little too tomatoey for me. So I'm going to add another tablespoon and a half of balsamic. And then I'm also going to need to add a little bit more apple juice. This burner goes from like high to off. That drives me crazy. Now balsamic actually, balsamic vinegar has definitely a sweetness to it. You can reduce that down and it gets very syrupy. Um, but I definitely want to bring in the acid component to my sauce today. So let me give this another little taste. That's better. Mmm. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Okay, I am going to add another quarter of a cup of my apple juice. So that'll be a total of a half a cup. My children will be very happy that there's almost a full bottle of that left. We bought. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Now I get the heat. Yep, I get it. That's just the right amount for me. Um, we went apple picking at the farmer's market. And we got, uh, just as a little treat for them, I bought them a half a gallon of apple cider. And man, they downed that in just a couple of days. And I did taste it at the farmer's market. And it was really yummy. It did not last very long around here. So I used an eighth of a teaspoon of chipotle and probably the same of chili or less. And just that half a teaspoon of, or a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, really. I don't think it needs any salt. And you know, I love salt. I really season my food well. I have very low blood pressure, so it doesn't affect me in that way at all. Um, and I have felt like as I'm progressing through my Whole30 that I am needing less and less salt in, in my food. So I wouldn't have thought that. And maybe I'm just measuring really carefully, whereas I used to not measure as carefully. And it seems to me like it's less, but I definitely, um, looking back over my other barbecue sauce recipes I've made, I put a teaspoon of salt and I have added a quarter of a teaspoon and that is a lot less. Yep, that's good. You know, it would be better if I had not used ghee, in my opinion. I don't like the taste of ghee and I can actually taste it. I thought there would be so much flavor in here that you wouldn't be able to tell it was ghee. And I have this giant jar of ghee, I need to use it up. So I try to use it when I think I can hide it. Man, I can taste it and it just bothers me. So I would have preferred even some of my bacon drippings because I would have added another layer of smokiness. Um, and not a lot of bacon flavor, but a little. And of course, grass-fed butter would have been much better, but we can't use that. So without the butter and if you didn't have bacon drippings, you could have just used any neutral um, high heat oil like an avocado oil. I wouldn't use coconut oil because that would impart a flavor as well. And there's my sauce. This is nice, rich, brown, dark, dark reddish brown. It's the perfect thickness in my opinion. I'll show you with my measuring spoon. I think that's perfect. I'll let this just sit here for a minute while I clean up and we'll put this in a jar and it'll go in the fridge and it will be ready for my trip and for the recipes I have coming up later this week. So this is the Whole30 approved 
barbecue sauce, and I will put up the recipe as I made it today, but again, your taste might be totally different. You might like it very spicy, you might like a whole bunch more vinegar, and you just need to kind of start with the base and then add things to it, add a little bit at a time to get um, the finished product that you like. Thanks everybody.